what stands out to you as important in 2015 in infertility in your area? Certainly, so for the big area of expertise that I have is in, in AMH or anti-malarian hormone measurement and the big development has been the development of two auto, fully automated assays by Roche and Beckman Coulter and that means that we can now have all the problems we've had with AMH measurement in the past and the variability that we've had with manual assays has now been resolved and it's going to make it really a robust biomarker as we go forward uh, with novel products coming online using AMH as their kind of way to direct dosing and stratify and personalising care. Well, I, I think that's the big thing across all disciplines in medicine, which is you find the biomarker and then you can really personalise the, the medicine. And, and what do you see is that taking us, or, or where's that going to take us in fertility? So uh, for fertility, the key thing is we can identify and pre prepare patients in advance of how well they'll respond to the treatment what they're likely to get in terms of number of oocytes yield. So you'll no longer have the disasters that, you know, the patient who you know, was expecting to get 10 eggs because her friend had got 10 eggs and actually she's only getting none or her cycle gets cancelled. We can do all that in advance and prepare her for those eventualities. We can also change how we you know, stimulate their ovaries. So we can minimise the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation. We can identify women with risk of excessive response. Make sure they're on an antagonist using low doses of drugs and then we can use Agon as triggers if required. So all of these things will actually improve and personalise care for patients. And, and what's that timeline look like? So we've been doing that you know, for the last kind of five years, moving towards that, but the biggest problem has been the lack of automation of assays. And so because of the manual assays, it's just been literally a 96 well plate and it could be one person doing a pipette, and that's huge variability with that. But now we have a robust assay, and that's really where I think, you know, it's the same sample that will measure FSH, LH, estradiols, turnaround times nine minutes. You know, it's a fantastic big step forward for that. And it's going to be every patient will have their AMH measure. So as you're looking towards the future, 2016 and beyond, what are your hopes? What, what do you think we'll see in fertility? So uh, what a big hope is that it will move away from the thinking of you know, one cycle or two cycles or three cycles and actually think about people having a package of care, just like we've done for chemotherapy, when we think of, people no longer think of uh, having one pulse or two pulse, they think of getting a package of care and that will maximise my success rates. I think that's what we'll be doing in IDF as well, so that people will realise that they have to stay the course and, you know, it's not just for the first go and if it's unsuccessful, move on, you know, actually they need to come back and do that second one and we'll be able to give them very accurate predictions of what that cumulative success rates will be across that. So we can again set their expectations right at the beginning and know that they have to be with us. So I think that's the first thing and other big developments are obviously in genetics and making sure that we can, you know, putting back euploid embryos and minimising the risk of miscarriage and maximising life birth rates for patients. So, so that, that's really interesting. I, I think I, I want to go back to the first point that you brought up because as we think about that, um, the future really does hold a, a really good sort of image of changing the way that patient journey is viewed by the patient. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I think that if, if that big picture package, and I love the way that, that you phrase that, is, is understood by the patient, I think that that increases the success rate and they understand what success means. Yeah. I think, you know, really what we're all in the business of is trying to get people families. And reality is that if you have, you know, one go at it or two goals or you come into it thinking that's it, the reality is most of the time we won't be successful. But actually when you do three or four goals, you're, you know, chances are you're going to have 70%, 80% chance of success. And then really that's kind of a huge paradigm shift. So moving away from that single shot to actually I'll have multiple shots of this and I'm most likely walking away with my family. And I think that's a great way to end the interview. Thank you. Thank you.